This is a miniature wave machine. It oscillates ball bearings in such a way to create a mesmerizing wave effect. Each cam in the camshaft is orientated one eighth of a circle and when I rotate the camshaft it moves the white spoon shaped levers up and down moving the bearings back and forth. If you like watching people making and building things on YouTube you are welcome to keep watching. I will occasionally throw in a few fancy hand gestures to keep you entertained but I can't promise anything good. Before the rest of you decide to click away, why not hit the like button or check out one of my other videos, maybe they can bore you in a way that tickles your fancy. While you watch the 3D printing montage, I want to say that this video is inspired by Jay from Engineasy and I've put a link to his channel in the description below. Ta-da! I must say, this project being more aesthetic than my last two videos has me excited in ways I never thought possible. I mean, look at all that plastic. Hand gestures. Oh, uh, yeah, um, ignore that. My favorite part of this entire project has to be this long red gear piece. Hands, um, okay, uh, yeah, so nothing to see here. As I was saying, this is my favorite piece. It reminds me of red licorice candy and I'm tempted to bite into it and see what it tastes like. Fancy hand gestures. The first step is to push this metal rod through the center of the long red gear. This was tougher than I thought as I made the tolerances tighter than my test version. And ta-da! More fancy hand gestures. This is what the cams look like. As you can see, the outer circle is offset with the inner circle. This means when it rotates, the outer perimeter of the circle will change relative to the axis. The inner circle has a hole the shape of the red long gear, making it easy to position the cam before sliding it into place. And the noise it makes is oddly satisfying. I rotated the next cam by one tooth on the gear, which there are eight of. And yeah, I stabbed my palm with the end of the metal rod, which really hurt. Anyway, this is how it looks, and now I just need to do the rest. While editing, I realized it would have been much better to have had a montage of the satisfying sounds the cams make when pushing it into place. Something like this. So far the cam gear shaft, cam shaft, gear shaft is coming along nicely. Some more hand gestures and another montage of me picking up cams. Interesting fact, did you know that red is also used on Valentine's days? Hmm, food for thought. After all that, I bet you're wondering, was it worth it? Yes, yes it was. Look at the magnificence, the sheer beauty of this piece. I spent the next few hours playing with this piece alone. And as much as I am trying to waste your time, I don't want to make it too obvious, so I kept to the highlights. Wee. Wee. Ooh. Hand gestures. Hand gestures. I feel like I'm getting much better at this fancy hand stuff. Never mind. Ta-da! Next, it was time to slide the spoon-shaped levers through the second metal rod. The holes are designed to slide in easily, allowing the levers to rotate on its axis. What the? Hold on. It looks like we have a rogue amongst our mitts. Never mind though. The rest of the pieces slid in perfectly. With that all done, it was time for the easy part. All I have to do is assemble the two sections to the base. And there was no way something could go wrong. I mean, only a moron would find a way to mess this part up. It is literally the easiest part of the entire build. It's so easy, I don't have to explain what I'm doing here. Just showing you is enough.
And look at it go! Wee! Sorry, I got a little distracted there. So I just need to add the levers to the base now. Again, so easy. Such an easy step. Even a blind leprechaun with two fingers and one leg couldn't get this part wrong. As promised, some more hand gestures. I started flipping the spoon shaped levers and I noticed something wasn't right. You can see by the reaction of my right hand, it was wishing it belonged to a blind leprechaun and only had two fingers. The good news was that this was a super easy fix and all I had to do was flip the camshaft around. And now each lever is sitting as they should be on the respective cams. Just look at the way it moves, like ballerinas doing a Mexican wave. If you're wondering what the issue was by the way, you can see here that the larger diameter of the cams are actually shifted to one side and the lever's tail end are also shifted on the same side. This is to create a small gap between each lever so they don't get stuck on one another and jam up. Once I was happy with the way the mechanism was moving, I decided to put the handle on, which was supposed to be another simple and easy job, but I think it built up some envy over time and started giving me issues. However, overcoming issues is a key part of making and building things. And once I had the handle on, the mechanism was moving as elegantly as I could wish for. It was time for the next step, the balls, bearings, ball bearings. Now, whenever handling small, smooth balls, it's important to be delicate, gentle, and most of all, patient. They can have a mind of their own, and more often than not, they will stray and bounce around all over the place. But with enough care and attention, eventually they will settle and rest happily at home. Remember earlier when I said only a moron could get this part wrong? Yes, that was the sigh of disbelief. For some reason, my hand thought it could keep spinning the handle and the mechanism would fix itself somehow? What an idiot. So what's the problem you might be asking? Well, the camshaft is where the levers are supposed to be and vice versa. I put the whole thing together the wrong way around. Time for some magic. Ta-da! Okay, so I've swapped the camshaft and levers around and now you can see that the levers sit more level with the ground before they were at an awkward angle. I reballed the mechanism and took it for another spin. Now the balls flow more evenly across the U-shaped section of the lever. It's amazing to see this build come together and I just love the way the balls flow creating a wave-like motion. This machine is almost perfect at this point with only one major flaw me. The waves it forms is only as smooth as I can spin the handle. Then I had an idea. I could outsource the job overseas to someone who could do the job better and cheaper than I could. Or I could use this motor I found lying around in my cupboard I cleaned out looking for this motor. I also borrowed this battery pack from a fan powered toy I printed a while back. All I had to do was connect the battery pack to the geared motor, test that it works, then connect it to the wave machine and let it rip. Initially there were some issues, like the balls strayed to places they didn't belong and some of the levers had jammed up, but these were all due to my inability to prep anything properly. But once everything was fixed and working smoothly, the machine transformed and became mesmerizing. Each ball swings from side to side with no care in the world, but collectively they form a unit. They come together and transcend for a higher purpose. Be the ball, come together and like this video, subscribe to this channel and share it with your fellow balls. Go forth 
Go now. Go. Go.